Hi, um, we're, we're quite new to this. We've been running for um, just over a year now. So that's Folkestone and then Ashford, our sister hub, um, are having their first birthday this week. Um, we have lots and lots of producers on board. They're all lovely local producers. Um, but we initially realised that we've got our, our main customers are middle class, quite affluent, well-educated, um, people who aren't living hand to mouth week to week. Um, so we initially started looking at, well, you know, what, what can we do? So for example, we've got lovely sourdough on, but it's sort of four pound a loaf. Um, so we, we were trying to source like a, a two tier system. So those people that want the organic vegetables and the sourdough and, and everything to be literally ticking every single box and can afford to, that's fantastic. But to also make it affordable, um, for your, your ordinary shopper to, to buy the same thing. We still find that our typical customer is that, that middle ground. We're not really hitting um, maybe like people on the lower incomes, the people that, that um, Joe was talking about, those, those people who are shopping, you know, in, in the supermarkets, lots of plastic, lots of processed foods. Um, We've also had, since the pandemic started, the number of our homeless in, in the local area has, has just skyrocketed. It's crazy. So we talked a lot to our customers about, you know, what we could do and, and how we could help. And we've had um, a donation scheme running for the last couple of months, which is brilliant. However, again, we hit a bit of a stumbling block there because the local um, organisations, even the food banks, People are asking for, um, you know, tinned goods and things that they can eat quickly. They, they may, you know, if you're homeless, you don't have access to cooking facilities. So donating fresh food is, is, is pointless. You know, I mean, you can eat a few things raw, but that's, that's it. So we do donate food to um, an organisation called Action on Homelessness, like directly. Um, but generally speaking, they, they would prefer to have money. So we are doing that and, it, and it's, it's opened up this kind of like this realization of this two-tier system um, where we are benefiting the local community but we have the benefit the people who are donating the people who are donating the food the people who are donating the money and then the recipients and although the recipients of it are you know I mean that they're, they're receiving food that's great it, it's still it's still an unequal system that the people aren't being they're not having the same experience um, from it so we recently set up a traders panel um, so that we have, because I'm one of the directors of the food hub and, and we were kind of, we needed something in the middle, something where the traders have a, have a voice and they can help shape everything that we do. And on the back of that, we're, we're currently setting up an education panel. And again, we didn't want to have something where we are educating people and, and they are you know, like, oh, oh, we are here, we can do this for you. We want something that people can contribute as well. So it kind of came at the same time that we were looking to extend the offer that we have for like donations of food. Um, we were looking at one of the, the local organisations, which is called CRAN, which is the Kent Refugee um, Action Network. We have quite a high level of, of um, refugees arriving here. And they did a wonderful program last year where they um, did internet recipes so you could cook along um, from their, from, you know, their, their countries of origin. Um, some really, really great things. So we, we've been exploring that and how actually, okay, yes, we will be donating to people, we will be donating food, but how can we actually alter that and make it more equal so those people that are receiving it are actually... Um, able to participate in that process rather than just receive it so it, it's it's um it's an equal process because obviously with the food inequality that very often starts with with people as well um so we're we're exploring that at the moment and and it's looking quite hopeful that we may be able to come up with something that's that's reciprocated because that's what was missing that that reciprocal kind of action um that you have with a with a donation um, we've also linked in with um, several local um, initiatives. So we've got the Incredible Ed Edible, which is a food corridor running. Um, we've got a, a place called Cherryton, which is up on a, on a hill coming down all the way into um, Sangate Community Garden. And they are planting. Um, so on the high street in Cherryton, for example, there's planters with fruit bushes in and herbs in that people can actually, you know, see food growing 
you, you can walk all the way up and down and right down to the vegetable gardens in the bottom there, there's something there um there's another local project in one of the schools called the locavore garden um they are a community garden where they're growing food they're giving away grow kits anybody can go and help out they're giving away seeds so for example if you have somewhere and you you cannot grow your own food if you live in a flat and you, you've got limited space you can actually go and plant it in the grounds of the local garden so we've been exploring with them rather than although we are looking at an education program rather than reinventing the wheel and diluting what they're doing we're looking at how we can link in and how we can link our traders in and most importantly, how we can actually use our combined experiences of all the communities that we do work with um, to actually bring them in and, and connect, connect them with like where their food's coming, connect them with um, how it grows, when it grows. Because, you know, if you are one of these people that are living week to week um, and, you, you know, you, you get your money and you know that you're kind of, you've got to budget, you've got to fill up your freezer, it, it's kind of you are generally buying the same generic four vegetables, you know, like frozen sweet corn, carrots, broccoli. We've chatted quite a lot to, to local people about how we can change this and how we can challenge it. And I think with food inequality, I think a lot of it is, is the not realising that actually it can be really cheap to, to know how to cook pulses, how to prepare things, how to freeze them, how to batch cook, how to, how to actually manage that and and there's there's a, a kind of a missing I think I, th I think some of it comes from how people are treated so for example if not that I do but if I was to go shopping when I used to work full time and I had the, all four children at home before my adult children left um you know I, I'd grab fish fingers and people would say oh I don't blame you yeah if you are on a very low income and you're buying fish fingers it's almost like oh poor kids it's that kind of like we're not we're not treating people in the same way so we're looking at how we're connecting with people, how we're connecting with community projects and how we can actually then connect our traders with those people to work on not necessarily an education program, because I think people do know what to do, but actually how it will all link in together and how it will all reciprocate so that everybody is contributing something and everybody is gaining something. And that is kind of where we are, where we are at at the moment. Um, because although we have some fantastic people, I mean, just I think the nature of our customers because of what we do and the kind of produce that we have on board, they're already socially conscious, um, environmentally aware people who are empathetic, who are kind. But it's making sure that it's not a, um, a faceless connection. We are going to donate some food. It's like, OK, well, why don't we find a way where people can actually mesh together and, and see what's happening there and make those connections in in real time with real people and now we're starting to come out and restrictions are being lifted and, and all of the um, community projects are opening up again we're, we're getting quite excited about um you know how how this is how this is going to go really so that's how we are approaching the food inequality issue um by just getting out there and, and connecting people and then we're going to support what we can support. Um, obviously, being a CIC, we, we do have like, you know, some surplus funds um, as our primary aim. And then actually, you know, start setting up some of our own projects too. We've got a community garden starting just up the road where we're going to be growing things and people can come and work on the garden and then we're going to cook a meal afterwards and just show how that seasonal produce can be used because it doesn't need to be expensive, but it's it's that connection has been lost. And even when people are helping and they are contributing, there's still that disconnect. Um, and that I just find really sad. So we're, we're doing what we can to, to combat that, which is not anywhere near, you know, there's some amazing, amazing initiatives out there, but that's, that's where we are at the moment, very much in the planning stages, but that's, that's how we're hoping to connect, connect people together with, you know, with us, with our producers, with what's happening. And, um, and also with other initiatives, we're not keeping it to the to the food hubs. We're we're hoping to actually be able to donate freezers, donate things to help you know help help people that are um, already out there on the ground and making sure that people have food and, and and can eat. But just we're hoping to offer opportunity. I think it's probably the best way to sum it up.